These men are not here for unpaid parking fines and traffic. I'm under no illusion why the men are here, Colonel. I just think they might be reminded about some of the good things they've done, rather than only the worst. Yes, that, that, is, that is something my predecessor used to say. Uh, in his last two years here, there were seven escape attempts, 12 injury assaults on officers and NCOs, including one killed. Since I've assumed command, there have been zero escape attempts, zero injury assaults, zero fatalities. Some may question my methods, but they do work. No soldier has ever died needlessly under my command, Mr. Irwin. See, I too share the burden of command. You may not think that I've ever set foot on a battlefield, but that's because you have never sat behind this desk, this desk. My men and I are vastly outnumbered. We spend every day behind enemy lines. Because make no mistake about it, Mr. Irwin, they are the enemy. But I don't need to justify myself to you, do I? I don't know. Do you? This wall that has become the focus of so much tension and turmoil. Well, in about two minutes, there will be no more wall. Hello everyone, this is PK Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you in our unrated, underappreciated movie review series and in this edition we will focus on the compelling prison drama The Last Castle. Released in October the 19th 2001, it stars Robert Redford, James Gladdafini, Mark Ruffalo and Delroy Lindo and it was directed by Rob Lurie. Now the story of The Last Castle is that we are set in present day where celebrated and revered Lieutenant General Eugene Irwin is sent to prison for 10 years and this is because he disobeyed direct orders to send his men to a mission which resulted in the death of eight of his troops. We see the main prisoner commander in charge Colonel Winter who initially respects Eugene's reputation and achievements but that respect quickly turns into resentment when he sees the constant influence that Irwin has over the other prisoners encouraging them to express themselves against the prison protocols. Irwin witnesses the brutal cruel treatment of the prisoners under Winter's rule and decides to unite them to form a rebellion against Colonel Winter. What ensures is an escalating conflict between Irwin and Winter within the prison which will result in Irwin once again leading a group of men into battle very much taking a last stand. Now the last castle remains a very compelling and at times very powerful story covering many themes of loyalty, betrayal, belief and revolution. Now admittedly there are times of outlandishness and far-fetched moments but his story is treated with enough seriousness and sincerity that it still makes it a credible story. It's carried by two very strong lead performances from both Robert Redford and James Gladavini. As Irwin, Robert Redford brings all of the integrity and statementship and conviction that you would expect throughout his overall career into this character. We get some very good moments to see him connecting with the other prisoners and he initially wants to do his time quietly but cannot just stand by and ignore all of the cruel treatment that he sees endured by the other prisoners. Now some may see his character as a very typical saint but there is some depth here within the character I believe. We could also question Irwin's overall mental state in that despite him being sent to prison he very much still believes that he's caught up in fighting a war. We question as to whether he's been able to move past his overall experiences and is he actually causing more harm to the men by pursuing this overall battle against Colonel Winter. We can also emphasise as he tries to reconnect with his daughter who finally rejects him after he sends constant letters to her. So is he in a situation where he's trying to latch on to something to fight for as it seemingly has nothing left to live for in the outside world. So it's a very convincing and rootable character that's presented here and Robert Redford plays him so well and so effortlessly. We then talk about James Gladdafini who is equally impressive as Colonel Winter who many would dismiss as the cliche tyrant or dictator or movie villain but there's actually some depth to Colonel Winter as well as he firmly believes that his methods are effective in keeping these prisoners in line. We see in earlier scenes that he refers to his predecessor who had far less control over the prisoners during his tenure and how much things have improved when he has taken over rule of the prison. We have a great scene with him and Irwin who's recently been put in solitary confinement and Winter speaks about how his methods are very suitable for the prisoners who are very much monsters and that's why he goes to the lengths that he goes to in order to keep them contained. And it's moments like this that make you think that maybe Colonel Winter has a point. 
that the prisoners are indeed convicted murderers and felons but at the same time that doesn't excuse all of the harsh levels that he goes towards treating the overall prisoners. The men are still human beings and should still be treated as such even when they are contained within the prison. We could also say that Winter is to an extent a very insecure and fragile character in terms of his ego because when the prisoners look up to Erwin he's unable to handle that situation. He even turns down the chance to transfer Erwin out of the prison due to his continuing influence and this is because of his pride in that he feels that he can deal with Erwin himself. So there are multiple facets to this character as well and I think it's a great performance from Glad Defini, who of course sadly passed away a couple of years ago and we all recognise him of course for his iconic portrayal as Tony Soprano. So I think it's very good to see that at this time James Gladifini was able to produce a very compelling performance outside the status of that role within The Sopranos. Mark Ruffalo also has a substantial role in the second half of the movie as Sam Yates who was a former pilot and officer who is very conflicted about believing Irwin's cause and is being tempted by Winter in order to betray him in order for reduction of his sentence. So I think overall it's a very good solid role for Mark Ruffalo. I also like the scenes involved with Deroy Lindo who's a supervising officer who used to serve alongside Erwin and he grows very sceptical of Winter's rule within the prison but he doesn't have sufficient evidence to remove him completely from his positions and I very much like all of the scenes between Lindo and Glad Defini, and I think Deroy Lindo is one of those actors who really should have a bigger career than what he currently has done within Hollywood. We then have to talk about the climatic final act, the last battle or the final stand and in terms of action it's definitely very explosive and spectacular. As I mentioned before it may be slightly over the top and unconvincing in terms of how we have this large scale war within the confines of a prison, how we see these multiple unarmed prisoners able to get the best of armed guards who are using tanks and helicopters so yes it's definitely a bit far fetched but it's still a very exciting conclusion and it definitely has a dramatic and impactful resolution to the overall story. I also have to give massive credit to the incredible musical score from Jerry Goldsmith one of the all time great musical composers. I love so much the main theme that plays at the beginning and the end of the movie with the monologue being read out in terms of the castle and its overall importance and existence. It so much evokes the same tones of his classic musical score from First Blood from 1982 starring Sylvester Stallone in the role as John Rambo and the musical score here really emphasises the impact of the final scene and it really leaves a lasting impression long after the end credits has rolled. So another great musical score from the classic movie composer Jerry Goldsmith. So if I were to give an overall score for The Last Castle I would give it a 7.2 out of 10. So we then go on to the overall release of the movie and sadly the film was a financial flop grossing only 27.6 million from a huge budget of 72 million and this is very surprising that the budget was so high given that the film largely takes place in a closed environment. Now I think a lot of this can be attributed to the refurbishing of a 103 year old Tennessee State Prison in Nashville which involved a crew of over 150 members who worked for 9 weeks in order to set up all of the exterior and interiors. James Gladifini also received a 5 million plus salary for his supporting role and this of course was due to his acclaimed status from The Sopranos. So the budget again was extremely surprising for this movie which for the most part is a drama and a character piece. Yes the climax is very action packed but certainly not enough to warrant such a high budget overall. But despite all of this I still believe that The Last Castle remains a powerful and compelling movie with two great lead performances alongside an exciting climax and a truly great musical score from Jerry Goldsmith and all of these elements for me make The Last Castle definitely a movie that deserves far more recognition and appreciation post its release. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and review of The Last Castle, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any other movies of this type or any other type that you'd like to see me review in the future then let me know in the comments and if I've indeed seen the film then I'll provide more extended commentary on the movie as well. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now, take care of yourselves, stay in safe distances and I will see you very very soon.